Today, many places sound like this. This is unhealthy. But there's one type of pollution which nobody is aware of. It is the pollution of sound. Noise pollution is much worse for you than you think. This is not healthy. When you hear about pollution, you might picture exhaust fumes, littering or oil spills. But there's another kind of pollution that you might not know. Noise pollution. What's noise pollution? The word noise is derived from a Latin word which means sickness, in which the one feels the need to vomit. Noise is the unpleasant and undesirable sound which can lead to discomfort in human beings. Like any other pollution, it originates from our society, plus everyone hates it. Some of its major causes are vehicles, aircraft, loudspeakers, industrial machines, crackers, and so on. In 2016, 54.5% of the world population lived in cities. By 2030, it is estimated that pollution will grow to be 60%. Noise pollution can be found anywhere, but especially bad in cities. The intensity of sound is measured in decibels, dB. The faintest sound which can be heard by the human ear is one decibel. The human ear can tolerate up to 85 decibels without damage. Anything louder causes a risk of permanent hear loss. Yet studies show that anything at or above 65 decibels can trigger an increase in the blood pressure, heart rates, and stress hormones in the blood. In 2007, researchers resulted from their studies on 2,000 hearing tests worldwide. They discovered that people live in cities have noticeable levels of hearing loss. Their hearing was what should have been if they were 10 to 20 years older. And once the damage is done, it is irreversible. We have microscopic hairs in our ear that relay sound to the brain. They are affected by the vibrations coming from our eardrum. If these vibrations are too strong, it can bend, break, or even destroy these delicate hairs. But unlike the hair in your heat, they don't grow back. According to the World Health Organization, noise is an underestimated threat that can cause a number of short and long-term health problems, such as sleep disturbance, cardiovascular effects, poorer work, and school performance. If there ever is a permanent fix to this problem, it will be in the answer of one question. When we will start taking noise pollution seriously? Did you mean this for your grades? Will you want to be good at school? But before answering these questions, we will tell you more about intelligence. So what is meant by intelligence? Simple intelligence is the ability to learn, reason and get solutions to problems. Let's watch some scenes captured from our heat schools, classes, while talking about our interesting topic. Alright, don't you tell us. Let's read the book. Okay, now I've got really like a very difficult question to be answered only by the smartest. Okay, I'm the smartest. As you say, uh, here we have A plus was given to the smartest in the class, Mr. Muhammad, please clap your hands. It is significantly highly hurtable and gave strong predictability in the outcome of many areas of life, including education, occupation, and health. In fact, studies suggest that genetic factors may have greater impact on intelligence level, more than environmental factors. Twin studies have shown us that identical twins have more strongly related intelligence test scores than do for eternal twins. 
Border family studies have demonstrated that people with strong genetic similarities are likely to have similar levels of intelligence. Dawkins studies show that intelligence of adopted children tends to correlate more strongly to their biological parents than their adoptive ch- parents. Also, it's commonly believed that children inherit their intelligence from their mothers. This is because most of genes for intelligence have been traced to the X chromosome by scientists. Very interesting finding about intelligence in 20 studies shows that it is her stability as estimated increased dramatically from infancy 20% to childhood 40% to adulthood 60%. They realized that the increasing trend of the heritability was probably magnified by the general environment as time goes by. So the environment has a role to play in intelligence. The researchers also tell us that genetics don't give us the full picture. Twins raised in the same house tend to have more intelligence scores than twins. Twins raised separately, indicating that environment plays a role. It's always noticed that environmental factors like good nutrition and educational opportunities tended to optimize their minds development and therefore their intelligence. Perhaps more interesting is that while both biological and environmental factors play a role in intelligence, the environmental impacts child, children more than adults. This is because the environment directly impacts by developing childhood and adolescence. Intelligence becomes more stable over time when development ends. So at least you can control some uh, in environmental factor to impact your children intelligence uh, interesting huh hello everybody are we ready to begin our journey in distance displacement speed and velocity we will also talk about uniform motion and non-uniform motion let's learn these concepts in more excited and particular way and at the end of our videos You should try to answer our questions. Let's say you are traveling like me. How do you practically calculate the distance traveled? What about the speed of your vehicle? How do you calculate the displacement? Is it the same as distance? What about velocity? Is it the same as speed? Hold on, I think we have too too many questions here. So let us stop the car. First, let us talk about distance. It is defined as the total length of the path traveled. To measure the distance practically, of course we can't use a measuring tape or a rope like we do for walking distances. In all the vehicles, whether it's a car or a bus, you all have a panel like this. This is the, uh, this instrument is called odometer, like this panel. Can you see the unit kilometers? Before you start, you can read the odometer reading. As you can see, it is 136 kilometers. As you're traveling, the odometer will keep on taking. Now, let's see when you reach your destination. Now how can you calculate your displacement? Displacement is defined as the shortest distance from the initial to the final position and the shortest path is a straight line. So it's almost as if you are flying to a specific destination. So it's not possible to use any of these instruments here. We We need to use some geography, we need a map. Here's our map. First, locate our school, initial position and the final position on the map. If you travel through a path to reach the length of this path, it's called distance, as we discussed. We can, it can be calculated by using the autometer in the car, but, but how to measure the displacement? Which is the shortest path, let's draw a straight line from the school to the uh, final position, and measure the length of the line by using a ruler. For example, the length here is three centimeters. Let's see. 
what is the scale of the map? Here it says one, one centimeter is one kilometer. So the displacement is three kilometers. Displacement is a vector quantity, so we can give it a direction. Here is the north of the map. So what is our displacement? It's going to have three kilometers in the northeast direction. Friends, try to solve this, the following questions. When is distance is equal to displacement? Please try to answer these questions and put your answers below the comments. We still didn't finish answering the rest of our questions. Follow us to the next episodes and to understand the other terms and answer the rest of our questions. The increasing trend of the heritability <laughs> the word noise is derived from, from. So at least you can control uh, your, uh, control the uh, environment. Environmental. Environmental. <laughs> No. <laughs>